All right, so uh, uh, it's 10 o'clock here. Uh, we have about 28 people joined in so far. And according to the sign up form, uh, we have over 40 folks. So let's give them another minute or so um, to get everybody in and then we'll get started. Numbers are going up, so hopefully everybody will have a chance to get in by that time. Okay, so it's 10 or 2. Um, so we have about 35 uh, attendees in the call. Um, I think that's very close to what people have signed up on the, uh, the sign up form. So we can go ahead and get started. Um, okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, joining the community day briefing here with us. Uh, this is a guard agency announcement for the uh, demonstration of the hyperspectral microwave sensor and um, observation. So uh, welcome aboard. Uh, quick introduction about me. Uh, I'm Versus Patel. Uh, I work at the, the Office of uh, Architecture and um, Planning at the NESTIS um, within NOAA. I'm the project lead uh, for the Guard Agency announcement. Right, uh, before we get into the, uh, the details of the Guard Agency announcement, I would like to talk about a few things. Um, if you are not speaking during the meeting, I'm going to request everyone to mute yourself uh, so that we don't have any disturbance of the meeting. Um, also, I uh, want to point out that uh, this session um, and the trans uh, uh, this session and the transcription are being recorded uh, part of this session, uh, and hopefully no one has any objection to that. Um, and I'm sure that a lot of people will be wondering uh, if uh, the slide package or the recording and um, the material that will be shared with the group or not. So I do want to say that yes, we will uh, uh, make the slide deck. Uh, recording and the video is available to the entire group after the meeting, uh, and we'll do that as soon as we can uh, uh, once uh, the session is complete. Okay, so I believe I have gone over the all the points that I wanted to go over uh, uh, before we get into the the real part of the presentation. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the next slide. Okay, so uh, for today's timeline for this session, um, it's a two-hour session uh, from 10 to 12. Uh, hopefully, we don't, we don't plan to take the entire time for everybody. Uh, we'd like to give some time back if we can. Um, but the, the first hour is going to be the, um, the, uh, the review that will be presented by NOAA. So NOAA will be going over the uh, the joint venture program that's been initiated within uh, the USF office 
uh, and uh, running these uh, broad agency announcement. Uh, there will be an overview of the community today and uh, some ground rules uh, presented by the uh, contracting officer. And uh, we'll provide an overview of the, the objectives, goals, and uh, the process of the, uh, that we laid out in the DAA uh, with the group. Now, again, we, we hope to uh, have that done within an hour. Um, and after that, we'll open up the floor uh, to the group to ask any question or questions they have. And we do have, we do have other experts on the call, uh, the science and technical experts, and um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll be putting those questions, uh, I'll be putting those questions out to those, to the team, and it will be, we'll do their best to get the answers in this session. If not, we will take, we'll take them as an action, and uh, we'll, uh, we promise to get back to you all after the session. Uh, around 11.40, we do have a small session uh, blocked out for any uh, questions that you have for small business related. So I would request everyone to kind of hold back those questions until that point. Or if we get done sooner with the general q and session, then we'll open up the floor earlier than 11.40. And at that point, you can ask those questions and we'll answer, uh, uh, we'll, we'll provide a response. Uh, and then at the end, we'll have our closing remarks uh, for completing the session uh, and that will be presented by the team. Um, at one o'clock this afternoon, we do have uh, planned out the one-on-one -on -one sessions. There are eight sessions that have been planned out, uh, 20, uh, 20 minutes each. Uh, I believe uh, all the sessions have been taken except one. So if, after we go over the, the technical details, of the BAA, if anyone uh, thinks to, to be to, to have a one on one with us, uh, we're welcome to take that slot and we'll be happy to uh, have that session with you. Okay, uh, let's go to the next chart. Okay, so as I mentioned before, this plenary session, um, the conscription are being recorded. Uh, if, uh, and, oh, yeah, and want to point out, uh, my, my co-worker has been helping out here to me uh, with the signing link. So, Rebecca, thank you uh, for uh, dropping the link in the check box. So, if anyone uh, haven't signed in, I'm going to request to click sign in so that we have a proper count of the, all the attendees we have on the session. And eventually, we'll be sharing with the, with the group so that they will know who are the people who attended the session. So please sign in. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, please make them available in the chat box. Um, and you're welcome to drop the questions in the chat box. Uh, even though we have not started the, uh, the uh, we, we haven't opened up the floor for the Q&A session, but uh, I'll, read, uh, I'll make sure that they get read out when we get to the phone. And we'll have a joint venture team to answer those questions. Uh, and again, if there are questions that um, not being responded and responded at this meeting. Um, it will be responded uh, with a follow-up uh, via email uh, after the session. One-on-one uh, -on -one meetings, uh, it's a similar situation. We, we, we both close our recorded, situ uh, recorded sessions, uh, 20 minutes each. Uh, uh, that will happen every uh, half an hour. Uh, at, that meet, uh, at those sessions, we will have a joint venture team. Um, the, uh, the, work to, uh, the technical expert team and um, AGO to answer any questions. Okay, so pretty much cover everything on this slide. We'll be moving on to the next one. Okay, so uh, today's agenda, these are, uh, I think we have already talked about these on slide two. Uh, so uh, I've already introduced myself. Uh, it has uh, uh, the other, uh, the joint venture team um, members has to get to their presentation. They will be providing their introduction so that everybody will know uh, who's on uh, who's on part and what. Um, so that will be a joint venture uh, program overview. Um, we'll, we'll go over a high level overview of the Times BAA, and we talk about we will talk about the process uh, uh, in the BAA. We we'll provide a point of context. Um, or uh, any inquiries that you have um, 
after the meeting so that you know who to contact, who can know of. And they will make sure that uh, those questions are being um, um, will send over to uh, the team and um, uh, we'll, 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 team will look at those questions and put the responses and uh, those contacts will send the, uh, the responses out back to you. Okay, and then there will be two sessions, uh, general Q&A session and um, uh, uh, very small session for the, uh, for the small business. Okay, let's chart. All right, so the, uh, the joint venture program review, uh, this will be uh, presented by Lee Mayer. Okay. Okay, th thanks, Arshash, um, and welcome to everyone. My name is Lynn Mayo, and I'm the Joint Venture Program Director. Um, if you haven't heard of Joint Venture before, it's a relatively new program, and it's part of the Office of System Architecture and Advanced Planning, or OSAP. And Joint Venture was developed to really how, uh, identify ways that we can leverage the great capabilities that you all are developing, um, whether you're federal partners, academia, industry, to look at what you're developing and how do we um, help use that to help improve NOVA's mission and provide high return on our funds. So there's a wide range of different things that Joint Venture does. Um, these broad agency announcements is, is one of them. But what we are doing are things that looking at uh, these great new technologies that are being developed, how do we incorporate those into potential NOAA operations? So that could be um, you know, looking at what the emergency technologies are, and can they be incorporated into operations, uh, maybe reducing risk for some of these new technologies, or just you know, demonstrating the appropriate reliability of this. Um, again, what we're really looking for is new ideas, new innovations, emerging technology, and we're not just doing research for research base, um, or resources um, for research, or just to do research for it. What we're doing is we're doing research in hopes to eventually incorporate into to more operations. Now, there is no specific plans to incorporate NIMS or maybe looking to look at into operations, but we're really at the stage of let's look at what the best technologies out there. Is this something that maybe someday we want to incorporate? And um, we are looking at the enterprise, we're enterprise base, that's really what this is moving towards the enterprise. So we're looking at, at all different um, avenues, all the different ways that we can maybe improve our, our programs. So next slide. Um, I am sure everyone on this call has, knows about RFPs and has done you know, lots of RFPs. You may be less familiar with broad agency announcements or BAAs. And so I just want to explain really quickly why we're doing a BAA versus an RFP. And what this broad agency announcement allows us to do, it really allows us to make sure that we're looking at the best possible solutions versus an RFP where we say exactly what we want, we really want to hear from you all. We want to hear from academia, from industry, from other federal partners about what is the emerging um, te technology out there, what is the best way, we want to really hear from you. So that's the reason we made this a broad agency announcement instead of an RFP, is we really want to hear from you all of these are the best ways um, you think that we could um, incorporate things in this case, but it really gives us that flexibility. So i um, really glad you all are taking your Friday morning um, to, to spend with us, and we're really looking forward to, to reading those white papers and seeing what great ideas you have. All right, thank you so much, Lynn. Um, so let's go to the next chart. Okay, uh, this will be presented by um, Dave. Sid. Uh, thank you, Harshnesh. Uh, I'm Sid Kukapar, um, principal scientist at the Office for System Architecture and Advanced Planning. I'm happy to be here and uh, welcome everyone. We are excited, to say the least, um, to have this um, this briefing with you guys to talk about the hyperspectral microwave sensor. Um, and uh, my slides here are going to cover why this is important for NOAA and why we came about to. Uh, Close this. So, a lot of you know the microwave sensing is important for NOAA. It's uh, ranked as number one in terms of uh, importance for the MWP systems. Um, this technology is expected to take it a step further. It's uh, more uh, spectral sampling. So, the hyperspectral is for the sampling of the microwave sensor, uh, the microwave spectrum. 
And uh, we do expect, based on studies that were done in the past, that it could provide um, benefits to not only the MWP itself, but also to the fundamental understanding of the spectroscopic uh, characteristics of the microwave spectrum. So even sensors that are being assimilated now, like HMS and Hanson NHS, would benefit from better understanding of the uh, microwave uh, spectrum characteristics. So like I said, uh, the uh, HIMAS concept, the hyperspectral microwave concept, is expected to give us uh, some added value to NWP, both in terms of uh, the analysis quality, but also as a result of that uh, for the NWP forecast. But it will have, um, the expectation at least is that it will have also other applications beyond NWP, uh, precipitation and other now casting applications. So as uh, uh, Lynn mentioned before, this is not the benefit of the space uh, uh, mission planning. This is really exploratory for the IMS technology and assess how could that, um, the learned lessons from this uh, project could uh, potentially help in our uh, next generation architecture planning uh, in the future. Uh, and how to better um, measure accurately the soundings that we already do with microwave sensors, but more accurately uh, with higher uh, resolution and that's extended those capabilities to active regions um, such as in cloudy and precipitating cases. Um, go to the next, please. So, um, and concretely speaking, in the BAA, you would see um, that we are uh, calling for partnership with um, uh, government agencies, FFRPC, ORC, academia, and private industry to basically leverage the existing components. Uh, so we, we sort of know that there are some components that would allow uh, the, uh, the final steps to build a prototype of the highness. So we are seeking that first step and then um, have um, um, some orbital uh, field campaigns on um, sort of orbital platforms to basically collect the data so we can assess the quality of that, understand the characteristics of those performances, understand the characteristics of the errors potentially, so the pros and, and cons of, that, uh, of those data, and uh, ultimately assess the data uh, and its impact on the MWP. Next. So what does a uh, successful BAA project mean in this case? Um, we are hoping to identify optimal applicable frequency bands. Um, so the, the microwave spectrum that we listed in the BAA, um, there's a, a range there. We don't expect that the harness would cover every single uh, gigahertz there, but we are looking for what is the optimal configuration in terms of frequency bands to basically have the best performance um, uh, from, uh, from the highness concept in, in space. Finalize the development of the sensor, like I said, to mount it on a suborbital platform and collect the data is uh, another objective of this BAA and uh, be able to demonstrate the usefulness of uh, such data to uh, miss these operations in a variety of special regions and that's for the purpose that we exist in, in uh, bullet number one. We want to try several regions, special regions, in order to basically learn from that and come up with it in the configuration. Uh, we would like also to quantitatively and qualitatively assess the value of the data. Uh, by qualitatively, we mean that in some cases we just want to show the, the images of uh, the hyperspectral of different uh, special ranges. Um, and um, the last bullet there is the repeat of what I said before, which is uh, performing the quality and, and validity of uh, the data and assessing the impact through things like MWP or Cs. Um, one thing to mention is that uh, there will be a, a government team that will provide guidance on a regular basis. We expect that uh, things like uh, you know, identifying the optimal frequency bands and so on, we're not going to do it in the world. There will be a government team that will provide uh, guidance on a regular basis. But there will be also a technical team um, that will provide a tactical um, support as well. If you need a sample file, if you need a reader for, um, for, for demonstration of the format needed for the output of this data and so on, uh, that will be provided as a support to this uh, project. And I think that is uh, the last slide for me, but you know if that's the case. Yeah, that's correct, Sid. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, before I go to the next chart, um, um, 
We can pass uh, 10 minutes. I see a uh, few folks have joined the session. So um, if you haven't signed in um, for the session uh, using the uh, link that you had on the send up, uh, there's a link out there in the check box. I'm going to press those folks to please go ahead and sign in. Uh, the next chart uh, we'll go to uh, uh, Gabby Bow, uh, who's a contracting officer. Gabby? Um, I'm Gabby Bravo. I'm the contracting officer who is assigned to support OSAP from the Office of Acquisition and Grants. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the two-step process that we've developed for this EAA. Um, so firstly, um, we are looking to solicit voice, white papers from um, any interested parties. And um, these white papers are for short. Um, they're supposed to be responsive to the technical requirements that were that were posed in the, the BAA itself. Um, they should not exceed five pages. And once they've been submitted, uh, they will be reviewed by a technical evaluation board on our side. We're just going to look at those white papers and see how they perform in terms of technical merit, past performance um, on similar study types, and um, we're going to look at your, your kind of high-level price that you submit with the, the white paper for your proposed study and concept. Um, so once that's done and a subset of white papers have been identified that are kind of like the most technically promising for what um, MedSys is looking to pursue, uh, we will reach out. We'll let those people know that they will receive an invitation for proposal. Um, and the people who don't move to the organizations that don't move to the next round will also receive a notice at the same time. Um, I do want to note that that doesn't mean that your white paper is dead. Uh, we have uh, resurrection capabilities for another year after uh, you submit your white paper. So if additional funding were to become available or we decided we wanted to expand and add a few more studies, we could go back up until I believe it's a year after the white paper submission and say, hey, um, we're not reopening this BAA, but because you submitted your white paper in response to um, to the first call, we can go ahead and uh, kind of like bring that back to life. Um, so if you are selected, you will move to stage two. You will receive an invitation for proposal. Um, it'll include instructions for you know, length um, of your proposal and um, also clauses that you should be aware of. Um, and then based on that, you'll submit the proposal on the due date. We'll evaluate those for your strength of concept to make sure that it matches what you said you would make with the white paper. Um, and you know, make sure that the price is aligned also with what you proposed in the white paper. Um, and if you've decided, it's decided that we're happy with that proposal, we'll move forward, issue a contract for study, um, and move forward um, that way. Next, next slide, Patrick. Um, oh. Is this David or me? No, this is this will go to David. Okay. All right, hey guys, uh, I'm Dave Spencer. I'm the, the technical and programmatic support for uh, for uh, our shesh in, in running this project. Um, so when it comes to the white paper um, and the proposal, some of the questions we had gotten early when the early after the BAA hit the streets was uh, understanding that there was confusion between what it is we're looking for in the white paper cost and pricing versus what it is we, uh, we want for study proposal and, um, and, and moving forward. So I think we wanted to spend some time Putting that into words, uh, and then hopefully, if, the, if it's still not clear, you can follow up with the question and answer session, and we can spend some more time talking about it. But uh, the idea here is, with the white paper, um, because we have to make decisions on the white paper as to whether the study that we put under contract uh, would provide the value we're looking for, we're not just looking for the cost of executing the study at some point, but if there's a future 
because of the Humes is looking at also uh, future uh, space concepts. It'd be nice to have a feel for what you, what you think that um, the future concept might be. It's part of the white paper also, understanding that it might not be known at the time, so if, if it's not, fine, it states so much, it's, but it's preferred, but it's only an option. Uh, we will update the BAA uh, after this to be able to, to, to say that, so you'll have it in, in writing. Uh, so um, then when you get to the actual proposal, obviously we choose the white paper, we get the proposal, and then it's the cost of the study and, uh, and moving forward for just uh, doing the study, at which point at the end of the study is actually that fiscal year breakout of what would it look like to do savings in the future if we need to. I think at that point, uh, I'll stop. I figure if there's more questions, you can we'll answer those at the question and answer session. All right, thank you so much, Dave. Um, I believe that was the only slide we had. So let's go to the next slide. Um, Debbie, you are up again. All right, so um, in terms of partnering and collaboration, we, we encourage um, information to teams if that's what will help you thread the, the best technical solution. Um, so that's definitely an option. Um, we just wanted to kind of take some time and discuss teaming arrangements. Um, so if you are deciding to submit a white paper out the team, um, we just want to be, to be transparent that the, the team lead organization or entity will be the will be the entity that that NOAA deals with directly. So if you have company A, company B and C, and company A is the team in C, company A would submit the white paper. They're going to be the one who receives the invitation for proposal, and they are the one that will receive ultimately if they are awarded a study, they'll receive the contract. Um, so in the white paper, if you are going to do a teaming arrangement, please identify all of the team members. Um, provide just, you know, let us know what the role in the team is going to be. Um, but it will be the team lead organization or the prime contractor's responsibility to manage those relationships, to put any subcontracts in place. Noah's not um, envisioning being involved in, like, managing your team um, and kind of liaising between the different entities. Uh, so that would be the team lead um, if you have any additional questions about that, we're happy to discuss in the, the Q&A as well. All right, next slide. So as of now, our target schedule is listed on this slide. Um, the receipt of white papers is scheduled for May 27th. Um, then once we've evaluated those, if you've been invited to move to stage two, um, We'll release that invitation for proposal on June 10th. Um, if you haven't been invited to move to stage two, you will also be notified um, there around there that you are not moving to the next to the next stage. Um, proposal submission. Um, at that point, you'll have a few weeks to put a proposal together. Um, those would be due around July 1st, and we estimate contract award to be around September 2nd. Um, but no later than September 26th, because that's when our fiscal year closes. Um, granted, all of this could change slightly. Um, we have received some feedback about the tightness of the schedule, so we're considering, um, we're looking into whether we can extend some of these deadlines, and we will let you all know as soon as possible. Um, so keep an eye out for any amendments to the AA. Um, those would include any schedule changes. Um, so that you would be aware as soon as possible. Um, next slide. Well, Gabby, uh, I just wanted to kind of pause there. Uh, I know sure. Rick has a uh, uh, hand raised. Uh, Rick, if you don't mind uh, uh, putting your question in the chat box. And, uh, we only got a few more slides after these, so uh, uh, we'll, we'll open up the floor soon for the Q&A session. And at that point, you can address uh, the question you have. Thank you for understanding. Okay, so I've already introduced myself, um, but I am working with Brighton Curtis. Kurt, excuse me, Brighton Curtis. Um, he is the contract specialist 
who is providing support for this, this action. Um, he's the one who's been posting all of the amendments in the VAA, so thank you for him. Um, in terms of engagement moving forward for the VAAs and just questions, um, if you have any questions, please reach out to me and Brighton. Uh, we're kind of like the liaison between industry and other partners and our technical team. So any questions you have, any concerns, you know, wrap them through us. We'll make sure they get to the appropriate parties and get your responses as quickly as we can. Um, and I think that's all we have for this slide. Uh, yeah, thank you, Gabby. Oh, Gabby, um, yes. we, I know that some folks might have uh, follow-up questions after the session. Um, is there a timeline that you want to give them so that they know they have so much time to get the questions to us? Yes, I believe the date um, is May 18th. If you have, thank you for that reminder, Prashash. Um, if you have any additional questions asked that aren't, you know, asked in this uh, forum or in one on one later. You can still submit questions up until May 18th. At that point in time, we're going to take all of the questions that come in. We will post an amendment to the VAA with the QA, all the answers. Um, of course, if you ask a proprietary question, we're not going to post that. But if it's something that's general in nature and other people can benefit from, we will post that response online um, in addition to responding to your, if you submit it via email, we will do it that way. Um, note about the Q&A responses, we might send out, like if we have a batch of questions after this, we might send that out sooner. Um, and then if we get some stragglers before May 18th, we might post like a second Q&A amendment. We just want to try to get you as many answers as quickly as possible so that you have as much information um, as you need to get started on your white paper submissions. Um, I think that's, that covers everything. Right. Um, yeah, and this is yeah, this was on the last slide uh, for the session. Um, so the next uh, agenda on the meeting is we need to uh, we'll do our closing remarks. So uh, I want to just confirm that we do have one more one-on-one -on -one time slot open at 1.30 today. So uh, if uh, what we presented in this uh, session, if anything got you interested, please uh, and if you want to have a one-on-one -on -one session, please take that slot and uh, the team will be ready to answer any questions uh, that you have. Uh, so, uh, okay, so yeah, so I really want to thank you, the team, uh, for being here with us. And uh, uh, I see that a large number of folks are interested in the PA, and uh, hopefully we will have uh, some general questions uh, popping up in the chat box, and uh, we can open up the floor soon to uh, respond to those. So again, thank you for being here. Um, again, just want to remind everybody that uh, uh, if you have any proprietary questions um, that you don't want to ask, that's fine. You can hold them back for the one of the sessions if uh, you are reserved for the time slot. So you can always uh, ask us at the point. And uh, I do know that you have already submitted some of the questions ahead of the uh, session. and. If we have not got the responses to all of them, uh, that means we are looking at those questions and our team is working on it. So when we are ready to get the responses out, we will get them out soon. Uh, I believe that is, that, that is all from my side. Uh, I'm gonna just have my joint venture team to see if they have any closing remarks. So I'm gonna start with uh, Lean. There's a question, Hoshesh. Oh. Right, uh, so say I wanted to kind of do a closing remark from the joint venture team before we open up the floor for Q&A sessions. Um, no, again, like, like Chris just uh, said, we just appreciate you all being here and we really look forward to reading the white papers. All right, uh, maybe I think I jumped ahead a little bit. All right, so uh, just taking a step back, uh, yes, we do have a question now since we don't have any more slides to present. I'm going to open up the floor for everyone to uh, start populating the questions in the chat box. And uh, we do have one question. Um, is it correct that the primary assessment matrix is in terms of national uh, uh, national weather prediction performance rather than any specific aspect of the sense temperature and or moisture profiles? Now, there's another follow up after that. Uh, and I'm going to hold on to that until we respond to this. 
Okay, thank you, Rosh So that's a good question, Joel. The, the answer is that the assessment would be done, the expected assessment would be done in steps to regulatory information first, assessing the noise and that's comparison to various temperatures, then the geophysical and information content, how well those temperature and moisture and especially other parameters are, are measured, uh, all the way to the NWP assessment. And to answer your second question, whether the government team will provide help in assessing the impact of NWP, definitely yes. We don't expect the operators to have their NWP system that is compatible with the NOAA system. So we, we expect that it could be done jointly, so your data would be in the right format. That's something that you would do. Information about the calibration, information about the, the spectral characteristics, and so on. And the government internal team would help in, in doing the NWP assessment. I hope that answers uh, your question. All right, thank you, Sid, for jumping and uh, responding to that question. Uh, the next question. Are there preferences for the suborbital demonstration, airborne versus balloon, and also better specific aircraft or atmospheric facilities with equipment before it? So the, the short answer is no, there is no preference. Uh, suborbital um, platforms would be all welcome. Um, the, the main purpose is really to assess the quality and the impact of the hyperspectral microwave sensor itself. Uh, the platform is there really to uh, put it into an altitude where you could really measure um, the, the data and, and assess it. Um, in terms of uh, preference for the facilities, um, same thing. I don't see any preference for, for, um, for those uh, facilities either. Dave, you wanted to add to this? If I might, Sid, thank you. Um, the, the suborbital point that we were making here was more to stress the fact that this study wasn't going to be able to fund anything in space because of the cost and the amount we could do. So uh, if, obviously if you guys have something that's space-borne, we'd love to see that sort of data also. We're not designating any particular platform. We're just using airborne and balloon as examples of what we meant by not space. If there's other ways to do it. Um, Certainly, we're, we're open to those suggestions also. All right, thank you, uh, Sid and Dave. Good job for responding to your question. Uh, okay, so uh, excellent. Thank you so much for your information. Uh, yeah, do uh, you, uh, you think if you have the services to that could help NOAA uh, go back into some of the white paper? And the, for the value of the red cable. Um, okay, so the another question: Could you expand on the flexible and agile channel in band selection architecture? So that's uh, again another good question. Um, what we're hoping is that, um, uh, as I said in, uh, in my previous intervention, we are trying to see what is the optimal hyperspectral microwave configuration. So the hope here is that we will be able to assess different bands and different channels configurations. And the expectation is that the design would be flexible enough that they, it will allow us to do those things. So we could learn the lessons from that and uh, come up at the end with the optimal configuration in terms of uh, spectral coverage, spectral resolution, um, and, and things like that. Hope uh, that answers your question, Marmot. Right, um, so that was the last question we had so far. Uh, by the way, for people to think of more questions, um, uh, I just wanted to point out that uh, we have the uh, contact email address on screen uh, for the contacting officer and contacting specialist. So if you have any questions after the session, um, please reach out to, uh, to them and uh, we'll call them internally and get the responses out to you. Okay, we are still open to take uh, more questions if you have. Okay, another one. Will there be any discussions related to protection against the Boeing IV-6 interface hospital? Dave, you want to take that on? Yeah. 
Yeah, certainly. Um, I guess, uh, am I reading your question was, are we going to be talking about that today, or are we open to the ideas presented in the white paper and studies to be able to address man-made interference and uh, passively said things? Um, could you clarify that? Sure. I, I was looking. Can you hear me? I was looking. You can see in, in the B, there's going to be any, any uh, provisions about the 5G, 6G that is all over the place. I mean, the AMS, the other, other NOAA, NASA, Air Force, there's a lot of discussions happening across the spectrum. Uh, the okay. spectrum yeah. that you heard that you asked me about that. All right, so yeah, um, in the BAA, we make reference to, we'd be interested to see if uh, this channelization that we're talking about, uh, if that can also be applied to uh, man-made interference, um, whatever that might manifest itself as, whether that's 5G, 6G, 10G, other things. Um, so um, we're certainly we're certainly interested in what you have, what, what your um, proposals have to offer in that realm. Uh, but primarily this is focused on uh, performance for microwave sound. Sit, you have Thank you. Yes, just to, to add to that, simply to say that the BAA text calls for um, offering you to to recommend what are the, um, the aspect that we should be thinking of in terms of handling the um, man-made interference. And I'm just going to put in the chat for the exact text set. So we are open to your recommendations on how to deal with uh, the 5G and other man-made interferences both for the protected and the unprotected bands, because this is like a special microwave and we try to arrange the wide, so it's not necessarily just for the protected bands. Yeah, in a perfect world, the design covers everything. <laughs> okay, um, we have another one. In table one, the spectral resolution is not specified for the this channel, at least to given any decrease calculated. Um, that is something that we have to get back to you on. All right, thank you, sir. So we'll take, we'll take that as an action. Uh, Follow up if you need to do. Um, we have additional clarifications on the music. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, all right, let's go ahead and have more questions if you have thought of it. Okay, another one came in. Um, the BAA has some statements about the duration of experiments that are expected. Could someone comment on that? Um, clarifying question. When you say experiments, do you mean things that would provide data for your, in the study, or do you mean like how long the study is proposed to be? I think it's about, uh, you know, some number of providing enough experimental data to demonstrate performance over a wide variety of conditions, that sort of thing. And there's some statements like it's multiple months, sometimes it's a month. Okay, so that one is yeah, I can take that on. Um, so that is, indeed, we have mentioned something in the BAA. Um, we are open to what you guys can offer in terms of duration and type of the flight, if there's a flight uh, involved. Um, and that should be part of what we will be assessing. OK, thanks. Okay. Oh, I do not see anything more in the chat box. Well, we'll wait to see if anyone adds additional questions to the chat box. I did, we received one question um, in advance of, of the industry day or the community day that we have not gotten to 
respond to directly to the entity that submitted it, but um, I do think it might be valuable to share the answer here. Um, in the BAA, we've mentioned that um, the, anyone submitting a white paper should describe the type of support that they're looking for from the government as they um, perform their study. Uh, one of the questions had to do with whether they whether the entity could reach out to NOAA entities that they have or NOAA um, employees who they have a relationship with for support prior to submission of the white paper. Um, the answer to that question is no, please don't do that. Um, what we meant by that was that if you are to move to the study phase and you submit a proposal, we are looking for you to let us know what type of support you're going to need from the government team as you move forward in the study. Um, so just a clarifying point on that, um, we, we can go back and revise the BAA to be a little bit clearer on that, but just in the interest of giving as much information as possible early on, um, please don't interact with any NOAA um, staff as you're assessing the way. All right, so we are still in the demo q and session. Uh, so any general questions? Um, we still have plenty of time to uh, talk about any questions that uh, you can think of uh, from now on. Um, Again, if you can think of the questions now, uh, no hard pressure. I mean, you can always uh, um, go back after the session is ended and uh, um, send us those questions to us until May 18th. Uh, we'll get the uh, response submitted after that. All right. Uh, uh, there's a question. Uh, how little data investigation from our side would be acceptable prior to passing it to the agencies? I would say, according to the BAA text, what we put in there is uh, some draft assessment of the calibration of uh, the validity range of the minus temperatures, um, as well as some assessment of the noise aspect. Um, but we do also call for some assessment of uh, the temperature in moisture, but that would have the support of the government team to provide you with ground references and collocation tools and, and things like that. So preliminary draft assessment of the calibration and quality of the raw data would be expected from the offer, and then some joint effort with the government team to do the rest. Thank you so much sir, for clarifying. There's an appreciation. Thank you so much. The right, so field is still open for any general questions. We'll give a minutes. If nothing pops in, then uh, we will go to the next uh, topic, the next uh, item on the agenda, which is during a session for small business. Okay, so just a, uh, a reminder for the folks who joined us late. Um, there is a sign-in link available in the chat box. Um, so, of course, if you can uh, 
sign in if we haven't signed in. Okay, so there's a question in the box related to small business. Uh, Gabby, would you mind giving the thoughts on it? Should we hold the question back until we open up the floor for small business? Or? Um, yeah, yeah, and you can, we can have that be a first question, the small business session, if you want to wait on it. Yeah. All right, uh, so thank you, Mr. Van. We'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that question and uh, um, We'll make sure that that question gets addressed when we, uh, as soon as we open up the floor for uh, small business. Oh, not seeing anything coming in. Um, I'm going to wait another minute. And if nothing comes in, I'm going to uh, go to the next agenda for the QA session for small business. Okay, so um, the BA offers the possibility of one versus multiple awards. Um, okay, uh, other question came in. Uh, so can someone comment on how the selection process might work in that case for the specified total program budget? Um, the total program budget. Yeah. The total program budget is $4 million for the hyperspectral legal rights sensor BAA. Um, so it's $4 million whether one is selected or whether three is selected. If there were three selected, it would be split across the, the proposals. It would really depend on which which white papers move forward to the selection phase and what the pricing looks like for those submissions. Okay, thank you for jumping in answering that. All right, we'll give a few more minutes since uh, see some people uh, still thinking about it and uh, giving us the questions. So. Okay, last call for any general questions. All right, so um, I don't see any more questions. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the next topic on the agenda. Uh, I apologize for getting ahead of the schedule earlier um, to be closing the mark. We'll get to that uh, once we kind of go over the, uh, the questions for small business. So I'm opening up the floor for any, for any questions for the small business. And I believe we had one question in the, in the chat for small business. Is small business currently VC funded eligible? Um, I'm assuming that's venture capital. Uh, I don't see a reason why not, as long as your small business is registered to do business with the government um, on Sandbox, you would be eligible for it.
right? We are still open for questions for small business. Okay, any questions for small business? Sid, I believe you have the one from uh, Wang at 10.50. I think we answered that one. Well, it's been a few minutes, so I haven't seen any more questions coming up related to small business. Uh, I'll keep the floor open until 11. See if anyone had a chance to think about any questions for small business. Just to follow up on that question um, that we did receive about the small businesses venture capital funded, um, I'd just like to point you to page four of the BAA. Um, we lay out the criteria for eligible offers, and there's a, a federal acquisition regulation um, reference where it kind of like lays out the definition of what a responsible offer would be. Um, so you can you can look at that and make sure that your your company meets those requirements. In addition to obviously registration on Sam Jacob, so that we know that you're you're able to do business. With Okay, two more minutes until we finish up this session for small business. So we have a few more seconds to go. Okay, it's 11. Um, not seeing any questions related to small business. Um, 
I would like to move on to the closing remarks. Um, uh, so again, uh, we had a large number of audience in this session. Uh, so we all, we all appreciate uh, spending time with us and uh, uh, giving us an opportunity to go over the, uh, the details we have in the broad agency announcement. Um, so appreciate that. Uh, also, a lot of the folks we have signed up for one-on-one -on -one session, we are uh, looking forward to those uh, uh, discussions uh, and we, we will be ready to uh, respond to any questions uh, who will be up at that time. Um, one more uh, a reminder again on the one-on-one -on -one session, uh, there is one open time slot at 11.30. So if anybody has uh, an interest to be on, to be to be with us on the one-on-one -on -one session, uh, please do sign up and we will be there. Okay. Ashish, did you say 1130 or 130? I did 130. 130. Okay, good. 130 Eastern. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, so that is all from my side. Um now, so now we'll go to the joint venture team. Uh Queen. Like to start with you. Yeah, again, thank, thanks to everyone uh, for today, and we look forward to reading your white papers. All right, then. Um, go to um, Sid. Nothing to add, just to say thank you for being with us today and for the questions, and we look forward to hearing from you. Okay. I just echo Sid's and Lynn's sentiments. It's um, we're really looking forward to moving out on these these new technologies and, and seeing what that can do for the no emission. So thank you very much for taking the time to put these over and respond. Thank you, Dave. Gabby, uh, do you have any closing comments? Nothing for me, just thanks for everyone's attendance and all your good questions. All right, so with that, uh, we will conclude these, the, this is the end of the session. All right, thank you for your appreciation in the, the chat. We had a good time with the group. Lots of appreciation in the chat. Thank you so much.